Maple syrup is just dehydrated tree sap. So it's pretty much pure sugar, isn't it? I mean, if you look at sugar compared to maple syrup, compared to honey, I mean, they're all carbohydrates, they're all sugars, but they do different things in the body. And I wanna look at maple syrup specifically. If maple syrup is just pure sugar because it's dehydrated sap, then how does it respond differently in the body? You see, there's a few things that make maple syrup different from sugar. We'll talk about them vaguely and then we'll get into the literature. Number one, if you look at maple syrup, there's different darknesses, right? There's different levels of like how dark it is. Some are very clear, some are very dark. The darker the maple syrup, the more the antioxidant content. Now we know from other literature that antioxidants are potent when it comes down to improving insulin resistance. So right then and there, we know something's different. I would almost consider maple syrup more of a whole food, whereas sugar is just more of a like sugar, right? Additionally, maple syrup in and of itself has a lower glycemic index. We're looking at like a 54 versus a 65 compared to sugar. So already it's lower glycemic. That's not what we're here to talk about. Anyone can Google that. The next thing is the mineral content. Once again, you have 25% of your daily value of zinc in a pretty much a small serving of maple syrup and like 125% of your manganese and other minerals as well. So there's definitely a mineral component. So again, full spectrum, it's more of a food. But let's look at the scientific literature. Now, after today's video, I put a link down below for Seed Daily Symbiotic. If you're trying to change your diet up, I would recommend you add a good quality probiotic or at least some good fermented foods in if you don't go that route. But Seed is a unique probiotic because it has a prebiotic and a probiotic in one capsule. So you see there's two sort of capsules in one. So it breaks down in different areas of your gut. So you have a better likelihood of proper colonization of bacteria in the lower part of the intestinal tract where you want the bacteria to colonize. So seed is super unique with how they're built, but also it's the only probiotic that I personally would recommend. I think most probiotics are garbage because they all break down in the hostile gut. So seed is unique and I definitely recommend you check them out. And that is a 25% off discount link for people that watch this channel. So again, 25% off in the top line of the description underneath this video. Let's talk insulin. There was a study that was published in the Journal of Functional Foods. This study took a look at dextrose, brown rice syrup, corn syrup, and compared it to maple syrup. Okay, they found that the maple syrup had a lower blood sugar response and a lower insulin response. Okay, well, that's good news right there in and of itself. Unfortunately, that was in rodents. So let's look at some human data. Now, human data is lacking, but there is a newer study that hasn't been fully published yet. It was just announced last July. It was a 42-person crossover design trial where they gave subjects a couple tablespoons of maple syrup or a couple tablespoons of liquid sucrose, basically liquid table sugar. And they had them do that for four weeks and then they crossed over. They, so they switched groups and did it again for another four weeks. What they found was interesting. The group that had the maple syrup in both instances ended up having a better score on their oral glucose tolerance test. What that means is when they gave them sugar later on, they had better insulin sensitivity, better insulin response, better glucose uptake. They literally handled the glucose better. So what that tells us is that maple syrup is just less daunting and less throttling on the body in terms of the glycemic impact, right? So overall, it had a better impact on insulin sensitivity and insulin resistance. The reason behind this could be a few different things, but for one, it's probably the antioxidant profile. So let's talk about this for a second. There was a study published in Pharmaceutical Biology that took a look at maple syrup, medium grade maple syrup, so not even super high quality stuff, just medium grade. And they identified 24 different active compounds in maple syrup. They found things like benzoic acid, they found gallic acid, they found caffeic acid, they found flavanols like epicatechin and catechin. Those are things that you're gonna find in green tea. They also found quercetin, which is what you'd find in high concentrations in like capers. I personally take quercetin supplements because quercetin is so awesome. So bottom line is there's a lot of compounds, not to mention the researchers said there were quote unquote multiple other phenolic compounds, but they were in such small quantities they weren't really worth listing out. However, it is at least speculated that it's not any one particular compound that's having an impact. It's the collective nature of all these different small amounts of antioxidants and flavanols that make maple syrup so unique. As a matter of fact, the researchers even said, and I quote, the mixture of antioxidants rather than any one compound counteracts the unhealthy effects of sugar in maple syrup. 
whoa, okay, so we are admitting that sugar is problematic, but what's interesting is that maple syrup might have compounds that help counteract some of the negative attributes of sugar. Okay, so how do we choose the right maple syrup? Well, it seems as though the darker, the better. Here's another study to back this up. It's quite interesting though. The Journal of Medicinal Food compared 30 different types of maple syrups. And they, again, they found that the darker the maple syrup, the higher the antioxidant content. They also found the lower the nitric oxide synthase levels in the human body, meaning there was more of an antioxidant activity in the body when darker maple syrups were consumed. We do know that antioxidants reduce oxidative stress, okay, like antioxidant, oxidative stress, that's the whole point of an antioxidant. And we know quite clearly that reducing oxidative stress improves insulin resistance. So although there's not a randomized controlled trial with maple syrup on insulin resistance, we can at least infer, at least to a certain degree, with pretty strong, strong feelings that, or at least data, I don't wanna say feelings, but data, that maple syrup is probably better than regular sugar when it comes down to insulin resistance because of the antioxidant profile. But to back this up, there was another study published in Journal Functional Foods where they took maple syrup that had two phenolic compounds sort of exacerbated. They took two of the phenolic compounds, words are not worth even trying to pronounce here because they're complicated, but these are active in maple syrup and they sort of enhanced those to make them more strong to see what impact they would have. They found that when subjects consumed this honey, it ended up inhibiting what is called alpha glucosidase and alpha amylase. These are enzymes that break down carbohydrates, sugars, starches. So when those are inhibited, you don't break down the sugars as much and they stay in the gut more, which may explain why, we'll talk about it in a little bit, there's an effect on the gut microbiome too. Made some of the sugars somewhat indigestible because we lack the enzyme to break them down, therefore less blood glucose insulin response with it. Again, all because of phenolic compounds, antioxidants, flavanols. It's a different sugar than table sugar that's refined, bleached, and stripped of all its minerals and nutrients. Let's talk inflammation for a moment because here's a big piece, right? We think inflammation is just something that happens when you get older or it's just what happens when you retain water. I mean, inflammation is a bummer, right? This is like a hallmark characteristic of people that are unhealthy, metabolically unhealthy, or just don't feel good. There was a study published in Helion and it was a large analysis taking a look at maple syrup's impact on inflammation. In spite of having sugar in it, they found that once again, the phenolic compounds in maple syrup reduced interleukin-1 beta, which is like the precursor to an inflammatory spike, and also prostaglandin E2. You remember all the talk about like seed oils being inflammatory or at least a lack of omega-3s being inflammatory? That's all prostaglandin E2 we're talking about there. So when you are in a state of having increased inflammation, these prostaglandin E2s elevate. It seems as though maple syrup has compounds in it that actually bring those prostaglandin E2s down similar to like how omega th omega-3s would, not in the same fashion, of course, but similarly to how we would look at that. Researchers also noticed that there was an inhibition of nitric oxide synthase, which is usually happening just prior to inflammation, and a subsequent reduction in what is called nuclear factor cap B, which is like sort of a master switch for inflammation within the body. So we're not talking any like small little, oh, we measured a slight decrease in interleukin-6, no, there was actually a decrease in the master regulator of inflammation with maple syrup consumption. There were a couple of compounds specifically in the maple syrup that reduced nitric oxide synthase or nitric oxide levels by 92.5% and reduced prostaglandin E2 levels by 89.5%. Nothing to sneeze at. Again, where do you draw the line? Like if you have 300 grams of sugar from maple syrup, you're not gonna be putting yourself in the best spot and it's not gonna be good and you're gonna end up in a bad situation, especially if you're in a surplus. So if you're at a, uh, maintenance calories or a slight deficit, swapping out regular sugar for maple syrup could be quite the game changer for you. There is one particular ingredient called Quebecol that is in maple syrup that seems to directly have an impact on reducing inflammation though. There was a, some literature that demonstrated that it can reduce lipopolysaccharide-induced, so basically leaky gut-induced inflammation. Most of the time with maple syrup, it's again, it's the combination of all these different ingredients and compounds, but Quebecol seems to be unique in and of itself. Now let's pivot over to visceral fat and fatty liver for a second. Wild, wild stuff. This study was published in Nutrients and it was done in rats, but it's very fascinating. What they did is they gave rats a high-fat, high-sugar diet for eight weeks then they gave them either one gram of refined sugar or one gram of various natural sweeteners like maple syrup, agave, things like that. They found that maple syrup significantly reduced insulin resistance 
compared to the other sugars, especially the refined sugar, and significantly reduced interleukin-1 beta in the liver. Okay, so it reduced inflammation in the liver and reduced insulin resistance markers. That alone is the recipe for fatty liver and a recipe for visceral fat accumulation. So when we reduce those, you're potentially reducing visceral fat and you're potentially reducing fatty liver. Whoa, just by swapping out sugar for maple syrup. Now, you don't have to just take my word for it. I'm gonna read an excerpt from the study and the researchers themselves. Natural sweeteners, especially maple syrup, molasses, and agave syrup, attenuate the development of insulin resistance and reduce hepatic inflammation compared to sucrose in overfed rats. Okay, we know this is in rats, but we do have good literature in humans too. More literature needs to come out. We need more studies, but it's pretty darn fascinating. There was one more study in endocrinology and metabolism. Another fascinating one where they took a look at the microbiome and they found that a regular baseline diet with 10%, just changing 10% of the calories to come from maple syrup versus regular sugar, maple syrup ended up changing the microbiome so dramatically that it impacted glucose uptake overall. It impacted the bacteria that specifically aid with the short chain fatty acids that help glucose metabolism. At the end of the day, I want you to remember that a carb is a carb is a carb if you are counting carbs, period. I don't care what carb it is, if you're counting carbs, the number matters. But if you're not counting carbs and you're trying to eat a nutrient-rich diet, I do think there is merit to swapping out your regular sugar for maple syrup. Just go for the darker, thicker, later harvest. The later the harvest, the more powerful the antioxidants. I'll see you tomorrow.